the word that all things were made. The chapter Yasin of the Quran explains that God be made, the God said be, kun, and there was. There is therefore again a similarity of cosmogonic function in the two religions as far as the word is concerned. The difference, however, to note, which is very significant, Dr. Muhammad Sadiqi already brought this out, is that for Muslims, the word is not God. The word is the word of God. And that is, the, in a sense, the theological foundation for why in Islam, uh, neither Christ nor any of the other manifestation of the Logos divinized, only the, the divine is divinized. But nevertheless, the perspective of the two religions are very, very close if you understand the function of the Logos. So in a sense, we have unity at the level of the word of Kalama relating to the oneness of God, as someone like Razi or Zamakhshari would say, and also on the level of the instrument by which the one creates the world, creates us, and makes himself known to us. Consequently, one can say that not only the divine unity is a common word between us and you, but there's also single kalama or logos in its principal reality in which we believe jointly, except that for you the word is identified with Christ and for us with the Quran. It would bring us closer to each other if you realize that we are bound together, not only by the doctrine of the one, but also by the doctrine of the word. If we fix our gaze upon the meta-historical and principial word logos, and only, not only upon its particular historical manifestations. There are, in fact, today certain theologians of Christian missionary activity who are coming out with the idea that if we could appeal to Muslims of presenting the Christ, not as the historical Christ, but as the trans-historical logos, it would be much more appealing to them. This is not an, uh, something that began with me, but I think it's a very important subject to pay attention to. There were, however, particular manifestations of this reality, and hence the creation of Christianity and Islam as well as other religions, especially Judaism, if we confine ourselves within the Abrahamic family of religions. Religions in which there are universal elements that unify and bind, and formal aspects and particularities that separate. Needless to say, different understandings of Kalama or Logos have existed also within each tradition as we see in the formulation of different types of Christology in Christianity and also different understandings of the meaning of the Quran as the word of God among Muslim thinkers and also of course as the Logos related to each prophet as we see in Arabi. Obviously the common word as related to divine unity followed by the word as Kalama or Logos in its metaphysical sense and the resulting love of God and neighbor are the most important elements that unify and bind us together. Traditional Catholic credo begins with credo in unum deum, which conveys the same meaning as la ilaha illallah. What could be more principial, central than that? Furthermore, we both accept the revelatory agency of the word, however different might be our understanding of the form that the word has taken in this world have our interpretation of the process of revelation itself. From the similarity of doctrine issues the role played by Christ and Christianity as the perfect model to emulate his imitatio Christi, and the similar role played by the prophet who, however, does not correspond exactly to Christ, the Quran does so. But nevertheless, the imitation of the prophet, who is the recipient of the word of God in Islam, the most perfect man, and the source of precisely of that imitation, which for Muslims is as central as the imitatio Christi is, to the, is for Christians. When the list of similarities that bind us on the level of these basic doctrines and that bring Christians and Muslims closer together are enumerated, we discover there are too many to be able to list or even to mention. But let us just mention just a few. Let's listen carefully. When we listen to this, we see we live in such a remarkable universe of common discourse that the differences really shy away uh, in significance. First of all, acceptance of sacred scriptures. We both believe that there is such a thing as sacred scripture. I'm glad that Dr. Anderson brought this out because, of course, there are certain 
liberal Christians who do not believe that the Bible is the word of God and that position is as far away from the evangelical position as it is from the Islamic position. But I'm talking about traditional understanding of sacred scriptures. Both of us believe that God has spoken and there is such a thing as sacred writing, sacred scripture. We believe in the reality and preeminence of the spirits within ourselves. That we are not only bodies, we are not only psyches and bodies, but there is a spirit within us. And both religions emphasize it over and over again. And also the preeminence of the spiritual world beyond our subjectivism. That there is a spiritual world out there beyond our subjective appraisal of things. We believe both in the immortality of the soul, central to every re religion in which bases action in this world upon the ethical uh, effic efficacy that it has and the co consequent result upon, upon the soul. We bo both believe in the efficacy of prayer and other religious rites. As a, as a good Christian and a good Muslim, prayer is central to their life. The forms are different, but it's remarkable how universal this practice is. We b both believe in the necessity of the ethical character of human life here on earth and that our life here on earth and our actions are not inconsequential but they have their consequences for us in life after death we both believe in the ultimate judgment by god and eschatological realities although there are differences as there are differences within christianity between the catholic and protestant understanding of eschatological realities. But nevertheless, in general, we believe in this, in this. We believe in the reality of good and evil. Neither religion uh, uh, dispenses with these categories except at the level one has transcended all duality, which is quite something else. But both religions emphasize the reality of good and evil. We both in, inter, uh, emphasize the interplay of the mercy and justice of God. I'm very much against this idea which was developed by Orientalism since the 20th century that God, Christianity is a religion of mercy, Islam is a religion of justice. This is an oversimplification of the most dangerous kind, as if Christ did not speak for justice. As if he did not say, I've come to bring a sword to establish justice. And as if Islam never speaks about mercy. Every chapter of the Quran, of course, begins with the name of God as mercy. So we both believe in this very mysterious interplay between divine justice and divine mercy which guides human life and whose really interplay is beyond our ken. We, really, we don't really quite understand it. But we both have the innate sense that ultimately things are just. Ultimately the good prevails. And so these very common everyday attitudes which don't think about, which are remarkably similar within the two religious communities. We both believe that the wisdom of God is reflected in his creation. Of course, many Christian churches gave up the cosmos some centuries ago, and now they're trying to recover it. Islam never went, underwent that process. But deeper down, both religions, the idea of uh, Ayatollah, the message of God, we are one real Ayatollah sitting here, but the rest of us are also Ayatollah in the sense that we are signs of God. That exists exactly in Latin, the vestigio Dei, which uh, men and women try to seek. That is the signs of the wisdom of God in his creation. We both believe in the path, the possibility of a path to march upon God, uh, towards God in this life. That in Christianity is presented to Christian mysticism. In Islam, of course, most of all in Sufism, but it also certain other forms of Islam. Even in matters of the relation of faith and reason, about which has been so much debate during the last few months, incredible things which I can hardly believe would be written by scholars of reputation if they knew what really has gone on. Uh, Christian and Islam have developed many parallel doctrines. In fact, in contrast to what some have asserted, there's a Muslim parallel practically for every Christian position on this issue from Tertullian, St. Augustine, Anselm, and St. Thomas, to Calvin and Luther, and more recently to Barth and Tillich. I can find for you a similar position on the relation between faith and reason corresponding to every one of these theologians. I separate us. Otherwise, Islam and Christianity would not have survived as separate religions as they have done so providentially. 
که تو سی 